أمين صلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم إن شاء الله we continue from where we left off we are studying the سورة آل عمران سورة آل عمران which is after سورة البقرة so the sheikh he said Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Saidi rahimahullah, he said, Allah has described seven traits of those firmly grounded in knowledge, which are signs of, ble- of their blessedness. First of all, having knowledge, which is the only path that takes one to Allah. There is no doubt about that, because how are you going to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Muhammad, فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. So he started with knowledge. So you have to have knowledge about لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ You have to have knowledge about the meaning of لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ means there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. This is the, the, the correct meaning of لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Those who have, who, who have not been blessed with knowledge they don't understand the meaning of la ilaha illallah. They say there is no creator except Allah. But this is incorrect. When you say there is no creator except Allah, is the meaning of la ilaha illallah. Because the mushrikeen that the, that the messenger of Allah was sent to, they did not deny that Allah was their creator. As Allah said about them in the Quran, in سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَهُمْ لَا يَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ If you ask them who created them, they say Allah. So the, the unity of lordship was not an issue for them. They affirmed it. They affirmed it. The issue was in the unity of worship. So instead of making dua straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they use idols as intermediaries. And that's why they fell into shirk, because that is called major shirk. When you join partners with Allah in any act of worship, whether it is dua, or it is a vow, or, or making an oath, or sacrificing, or other than that, this is also shirk, because shirk can take place either in rububiyah, lordship, or worship. A rububiyah, a lordship, like when someone believes there is another creator beside Allah, this is shirk, a rububiyah, a lordship. Likewise, if he believes that the soothsayers and the psychic and the fortune tellers, they know the unseen, then he has committed shirk in Rububiyyah. Because the only one who knows the unseen is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these psychic, they're liars. They're liars. And the jinn, they lie to them. They lie to them. They tell them about the future and all these things. But all these, these affairs, they are all lies. They are all lies. So knowledge is, is, is very important to, to have because without it, you will not know your Lord. And that's why, Juan, in the grave, where we're all going to, we're, we're all gonna go through that. And when the two angels, they ask you, they say, who is your Lord? So how, how are you gonna answer if you don't know your, your Lord? So you, have to have, you have to have knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will ask you about your Lord, who is your Lord. So those who are firm in their faith and knowledge, they will say, my Lord is Allah. Then they will ask you, and they're terrifying, because they have to be like that to test the creation. So they will say, what is your religion? So if you don't know anything about your religion, you have not studied, you don't know anything about it, how are you going to answer it correctly? And then they will ask you, what do you say about the man who was sent amongst you? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't know who he is. Some people, they don't know anything about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you find them singing the, the Qasida, you know, and celebrating his birthday, which is an innovation in the religion. So they have no connection with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to know who he is, his lineage. And you have to know every aspect of his biography, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is very important. And then the, the one who is firmly uh, grounded in knowledge, he will, he, will, he will answer correctly. He will say, 
my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam, and Prophet Muhammad is, is my messenger, my prophet and messenger, then they would say, how do you know? Ah, how do you know? Very important. So he would say, I read the book of Allah, and I believed in him, and I believed. So then a, a voice will, will say from the heaven, my servant has said the truth. See? So this is the one who will pass the test. Then they will, the, the voice will say, furnish his grave from the furnishing of paradise. Allahu Akbar. And fragrance his grave from the fragrance of Jannah. And make his grave spacious. Allah. So the grave will be spacious. So it's like a, a garden from the gardens of paradise. He will be like in a garden the, from the garden. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said uh, the grave is either a, a, one, a garden from the gardens of paradise or a pit from the pits of the hellfire. May Allah, pro may Allah protect us from the hellfire. So this is the fruit of knowledge. When you know about your Lord, this is the end result. The Sheikh said, second, being firmly grounded in knowledge, it is a trait that is more than just having knowledge. Because being firmly grounded means that the one endowed with knowledge is an articulate person as well as a researcher. He has been endowed by Allah with customary knowledge and implicit wisdom, such as a person has firm foundation of the, in the religion of the of all aspects in knowing, in being, and in action. May Allah make us from that. Number three, he has complete faith in the entire book, i.e. the Quran, and understands the mutashabi. Mutashabi is those, those ayat that are ambiguous, so they need clarification. Those are mutashabi. And the muhkamat are those ayat that are clear-cut. They don't need to be explained. They're very clear. In the light of al-muhkam, al-muhkam, which is that which is clear. As Allah mentions that such people say we believe in it, it is all from our Lord. Number four, they consist, uh, consistently beg Allah to save them from the trial by which the deviant ones were tested. So even though they are guided and they, they are well grounded in knowledge, they don't feel secure, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make them firm so that they don't deviate, like those who deviated. Because some of those who deviated, they had knowledge. Like, for example, the children of Israel, they had knowledge, but yet they deviated. They followed after their desires, you know? They followed after their desires. Number five, they show their gratitude for Allah's benefaction of granting them his guidance by saying, Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us. Allahu Akbar. Number six, they plead for Allah's kindness by asking him for all pieties and protection from all evil. For this purpose, they use the mediation of Allah's sacred name, Al-Wahhab. Number seven, as Allah described, they have complete faith and fully believe in the, in the day of recompense, are, are conscious of Allah. This is very faith, entices them to commit pious deeds and protects them from errors. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَن تُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ وَقُودُ النَّارُ May Allah protect us. And he said, the disbelievers, neither their wealth nor children will avail them in the least against Allah. The kuffar. Allah states that the disbelievers who disbelieve in him and his prophets, Peace be upon them, and deny his religion and divine books 
are deserving of severe punishment for their disbelief and sins. They will neither derive benefit from their wealth nor their children in the hereafter. Although they face the hardship of this world because of them and kept saying, نحن أكثر أموالا وأولادا وما نحن بمعذبين. So this is what they said. We have more wealth and children, and we will not be punished. Subhanallah. Huh. On the day of recompense, they will face a situation that they had never expected. As Allah said in the Quran, وبدأ لهم سيئات ما كسبوا وحاق بهم ما كانوا به يستهزئون. The evil of what they of what they earned will become apparent to them. And they will be overwhelmed by that which they mocked. Subhanallah. Wealth and children have no value in the sight of Allah. Rather, a person only derives benefit and reward from Allah on the basis of his faith in Him and His pious deed. This is this is related by Allah elsewhere in the Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. وما أموالكم ولا أولادكم بالتي تقربكم عندنا زلفا إلا من آمن وعمل صالحا فأولئك لهم جزاء الضعف بما عملوا وهم في الغرفات آمنون. It is neither your wealth nor your children that bring you close to us. الله أكبر. It is those who believe and do righteous deed that come close to us. They will have a double reward. For what they did, they will dwell safely in mansions in paradise. May Allah make us one of them. Imagine, Ikhwan, you live forever. Allah Akbar. I mean, sometimes when when I think about it, it's just beyond our limited intellect, you know, because this intellect that Allah blessed us with is limited, you know. Subhanallah, forever. You never, you never have to worry about death, sickness, you know, school, work, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, the problems that we face in this world, the trials and tribulation and all these things that we go through, right? Hardship and other than that. You don't have to worry about that. SubhanAllah. Forever. <sighs> SubhanAllah. And uh, there is no night in, in paradise. So you don't go to sleep. <laughs> Subhanallah al-Abeen. Because sleep actually is a deficiency, you know? Yeah. So and uh, so you, you eat, you desire something, it will come to you. Subhanallah al-Abeen. You have everything that you desire. Allah Subhanallah. Allah informs us that the disbelievers will be, in, will be the fuel for the fire. May Allah protect us. Remaining in it forever, Allah's decree that the disbelievers cannot derive benefit from their wealth or from their children has been applied to all of the previous nations. For example, Pharaoh, as well as the tyrants, oppressors, autocrats, and kings who came before and after him will, will, will all be dealt with a similar in a similar, when they denied Allah's verses and signs, because his enemy and refused to accept the teachings of his prophets, Allah will seize them for their sins and take them to, to task due to, to them, and it will be based on his justice and not oppression. Allah is severe in punishment, meaning Whoever does this, that warrants punishment, then Allah will confer on him a severe punishment. The cause of the punishment and chastisement can be infidelity, kufr, as well as various, uh, uh, very, various other sins that are of different degrees and classifications. Subsequently, Allah decrees, say, Muhammad وسلم, to those who disbelieve, you will be overcome and gathered together in hell, an evil resting place. 
This indicates a sign of help and victory for the faithful and a warning for the disbelievers. It occurred just as Allah had promised. Allah indeed provided help to the faithful against their enemies, such as the disbelievers, the idolaters, the Jews, and the Christians. He will continue to provide help for his servants and the faithful until the day of recompense. This contains a lesson and is a sign of the veracity of the Quran, which anyone can see and observe. Allah has mentioned that the disbelievers alone with humiliation and defeat in this world will be heard towards hell. May Allah protect us. What an evil place to be. And their evil deeds will produce an absolute horrendous consequence. May Allah protect us. SubhanAllah. Inshallah, we will stop here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. And may Allah make us from the people that will enter in Firdaus al-A'la ma'al nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair.